Hey, what's up everybody? This is Kevin from SimpleDrummer.com. Today I'm hanging out with Chuck Keeping, great drummer, also known as the drummer from the band Big Rec. Chuck, thanks for being here today and hanging out. Thanks for having me. I have a couple of uh, questions for all the folks at mm -hmm. home to kind of get to know a little bit about you, yourself as a drummer, and a fantastic human being as well. Uh, first off, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you got started playing the drums in the first place actually started out on guitar yeah so my dad was a uh, weekend warrior you know as they, as they call him um, played in bands every week in local bands but his band went off and practice uh, in our in our basement at home and uh, you know I've, I've been playing guitar for two or three years at that point and so I knew a little bit about music and structure and you know arrangements and whatnot but uh, only from the guitar perspective. So his, his drummer actually um, broke his ankle. So I said, hey, I'll do it. And I've never played drums before at that point. But, uh, you know, the drums are in the basement. And like all guitar players do, you, you know, if there's a drum kit or vice versa, you go down and you start playing. So I figured out that I could play a couple beats and keep some steady time. And, uh, yeah, so I just woodshed, you know, woodshedded for about two weeks. Learned four or five beats couple of little fills, you know, every fourth bar, da da da, crash. Yeah. Go Pat to, Boone, Debbie Boone. Yeah, yeah. which I still do, <laughs> uh, which is still my main drum fill. can never lose with that one. Um, you know, simple things like, okay, maybe I should go to the ride on the, on the course or solo. Bring it down on the verses, build up the courses, and just, just, just got enough together just to get through the, through the gig. And, and I actually did the gig. I think it was 12. And after that, after the first time I got up on stage and, and felt, you know, felt the kick drum moving air through a PA, yeah. you know, that's, that's when I said, oh, I think I'm going to put more time into, you know, learning uh, drums. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can stay in the loop for all of our future videos. Who would you say is the biggest supporter of yours throughout your drumming career? Oh, it'd have to be my father, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he was the one who supported me the whole way. You know, not going to get into the things, but yeah, he was always there 100%. And, and outside of that, of course, the rest of my family, um, you know, my mom especially, you know, having a, a drummer in the basement growing up. It's never easy for anybody else in the family. Yeah. Uh, my sister... And of course, my uh, my my fiance Catherine. So she's put up with a lot and being on the road and you know. So yeah, yeah, family definitely. Fa family, of course. Families are always the the biggest supporters. I, I find. Well, going through your upbringing as a drummer and learning everything you've learned, who would you say is your drumming hero? Who inspired you the most? I would have to say Phil Rudd was probably my first like. Real inspiration. Real inspiration. Yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, I, I kind of want to do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you mature and you, you go in different directions and, and you come back full circle, you know? There's still days where if I want to get pumped up for a show, I'll put on Phil Rudd. Something like, you know, um, you know, a whole lot of Rosie or, yeah. you know, by ACDC or something like that. Um, what would you say is your favorite thing about having a career as a musician? You do have a lot of time, you know, away from the normal, you know, rat race of life because you're not doing the nine to five commute. You're not spending, you know, an hour to two hours trying to get to work and get home from work. Yeah. Um, you, you can do your grocery shopping at nine o'clock at night when the store is empty. There's so many little things that save you so much time that you don't think about. I can get up on a Monday afternoon and spend the whole day on a Monday, you know, sitting in my in my yard. Whereas most people on Sunday nights, they're stressed out. You gotta go to bed early because you gotta go to work on Monday and start the rat race again. Yeah, being free of a routine yeah, like that. Yeah, basically. Guess. So that's a big thing, I think. That's a pretty good advantage, but but there's also the flip side of that coin too, right? And there's times where, like, for example, I was just on the road for two and a half months and wasn't even home, different city every day. No matter what you do, there's always, you know, a flip side. There's always advantages and disadvantages. But 
I would have to say just being my own boss. So now you're playing with Big Rec. That's what yes. you've been doing most recently with your career. You know, you've done a lot of work with them on the road, um, some work with them in the studio as well, mm -hmm. on the records. Um, of, of everything about this entire experience, what would you say is the aspect you're the most proud of? Joining um, a group of musicians who you really respect is something to be really proud of. The musicianship in that, in that organization is pretty strong. And to be, you know, to be recognized as uh, a peer or somebody who could just come in and, you know, do that show, uh, I think that's uh, something that uh, I'll always hold in high regard. So you, you guys have been on the road, you've traveled to many places. What would you say is the coolest place you've ever played a show? Oh, Kuwait. We, uh, the armed forces flew us over just before Christmas this past uh, Christmas and yeah we uh, we were flown over to Kuwait they, they built a stage out and we were on the uh, the Air Force Base which is uh, you know it's a collaboration between the US uh, Canada and and Kuwait when we showed up it, it was like Christmas to them well I guess it was Christmas that's why yeah. we were there yeah. uh, the purpose of the trip was to you know build morale for um, for soldiers because some of these uh, people are there for six months, eight months to a year, you know, and they know they're not going home for Christmas and things like that. So to, to help these people that are over there, you know, for these periods of time, just to go over and, okay, help boost the morale, go over and play for them, come yeah. back. I, I think that was probably one of the, um, the highlights for sure. What is the greatest lesson you've learned for yourself from your experience with a band like Big Rec? Just be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to play like the drummer who was in the band before. Right. Um, take, you know, study it and, and replicate it the best you can. But at the end of the day, you still have to, you know, filter it through Chuck. Because it always sounds better when I, if I've heard things that I've played on where I tried to play exactly. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not talking about, of course, there are certain fills or certain beats. Those are a part of the song. Those have to be there. But you, you have to just let it come out of you naturally instead of trying to say, oh, when, it, when he was playing, he's a bit on top. Or when he played it, he was a bit, you know, if you start thinking, you drive yourself crazy. So study, study is hard, try to get it the best you can, but when it actually comes time to play and perform and make music, then all that kind of goes out the window. It's already in you. Now just let it come out yeah. and not think about it. Just, just play and just listen. And I think that's a pretty big uh, lesson. Um, could you describe for for us, everyone at home, an instance in your life, in your musical career, I guess, where you felt that you failed in some way? How did you turn that failure into future successes? I did a, um, I used to do a lot of sessions when Sony Records and BMG Records were still a thing <laughs> in Canada. Mm -hmm. I think everything is shut down now. So then I got a call to, I'm not going to mention any names, but I got a call to play with a major artist um, on a recording that he was doing. And I thought, okay, great. You know, I learned all the songs. Now, the thing was, I had a, a big paying gig the night before. We got to the session and it just wasn't going well. It just wasn't grooving. It wasn't happening. And I, I started to put the blame on myself. I'm like, you know, was that a few hundred bucks really worth what I put myself through to, you know, I should have stayed home and got rest and I should have, you know, got up and had a breakfast. And, but no, I was like, no, well, playing, that's what I do. I play, I gig, I play. And so anyway, 
they, they sent me home. That long story short, uh, they said, Chuck, this is just not working. They sent me home. Thanks for coming out. And, you know, here's your day's pay, but we're going to have to. So they flew in a guy um, from Vancouver to finish the recording, finish the session. So this is the first day, remember, I got sent home. After I just played on all these and highly recommended, and it was the same team of producers and everything. It's just the artist just wasn't gelling. Yeah. It's like whatever it was, and there's nothing I can do. And this goes back to what we were talking about before, about, you know, you just got to be yourself. And at that point, I started to panic. I'm like, oh, maybe I should try to play like this and play like that. And then the more I did it, the worse it got, you know. So, yeah, that, that was pretty devastating. And I went home and, um, you know, I started rethinking everything. Like, maybe I don't have the, what it takes. Maybe it's, you know. Now, I finally got to work with an actual real, real session, big time. And they're like, no. Go home. Go yeah. home. So maybe I'm like, maybe I'm, maybe I should have. Maybe it's good I did that bar gig last night because I'm probably going to need to pl keep playing in that bar for the rest of my life, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, I went home and I, I didn't let it get me down too much, but of course, you know, it happens, right? And so then I, I got a call back, probably two or three months went by. I got a call back from the same um, production team and engineer like chuck you want to come we got the session I'm like really it's like yeah come on in man and i thought man I, like i really blew the last one i'm surprised you know you guys are calling me I'm like oh no you didn't blow it it was because the producer came in he had no direction we couldn't even work with the guy you didn't hear what was happening in the control room did you i'm like no i'm out there you know st stressing out oh, no, that had nothing to do with you. Like, you were doing great. It's just nobody was, there was just, they didn't even know what they wanted in the first place. After hearing that and after those couple of months, I'm like, man, like, I almost threw down the sticks after that. And then <laughs> now, so you never know, right? So yeah. that was that was probably a huge, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, everybody I know has gotten either fired or let go or, so that was, uh, I, I hope that answers your question. I know it's yeah, the no, exact absolutely, answer, absolutely. But, but yeah, that was a big turning point. So yeah, those those were um, a few rough months, you know. Yeah, it's and, amazing how much self doubt can yeah. be generated by an yeah. experience like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Anything, like total Marvel universe superpower, anything is possible. I think to be able to fly. To fly. Yeah. If it was like strictly. I'm thinking about me yeah. and not what, what I can do with my superpowers. Yeah, if that just wasn't what you'd in, like to be able to do. Just me personally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to be able to just, you know, go like this and just go anywhere. Yeah. Maybe because I always wanted to be a pilot too. Maybe, I don't know. I'm still thinking about starting to uh, take some flight lessons. And You know, if you could offer some advice to all of the younger drummers out there, not necessarily in age, but in experience who one day want to be professional drummers, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what sort of words of wisdom or advice would you offer to all of those drummers at home? Um, first of all, find out what you're best at and probably stick with that because there's not enough time, you know, especially when you you know you start gigging you got all of a sudden you don't have time for anything you you gotta write charts you gotta you know life life happens right but with that being said be very versatile learn learn as much about the drums other instruments all styles of music because there's periods where my main income is not even my main style i'm playing country i'm playing blues i'm playing but but at the same time nobody has you can't be the best at everything you know there's a few drummers out there that are pretty good at being chameleons but everybody has their their strength and so find that out because that also make you stand out and be unique you know great yeah. chuck thanks so yeah. much for being here today man and talking to all of us yeah, giving thanks. us your insights and you know letting us into your your your, your personal world a little bit yeah. you know your career and everything that's great a lot of great stuff for all the drummers out there to kind of hear and and think about oh thanks thanks, thanks. for having me kevin yeah, yeah right on anytime okay right all on. right part thanks. two next year all right see you guys next time